So we find ourselves at Beachy Island, a very solemn sight, signifying the tragedy that was the Franklin Expedition of 1845. So it was here that the Beachy crew went and wintered, uh, finding refuge in this particular cove for their ships before they sought to go and conquer the Northwest Passage. Uh, for three of the members of the crew, they never left this island, and it's their grave markers here that are a reminder of that. And for their crewmates, they would also go on and sail into a fate that would not bring them uh, the achievements they were hoping for. So we see a few remnants of the, the first overwintering of the Franklin ships, the Airbus and Terra and their crews coming here. So again, trying to be comfortable. So rather than just spending all their time on the ships, actually setting up some tents and we see some of the imprints just over there of some of the tent sites. We've got the graves here, obviously, for the individuals who succumbed to pneumonia and, and tuberculosis and so on. We've also got then Northumberland House, which you all saw, the, the sort of ruins and remains of what would have been a, a pretty ample storehouse. So again, by coming in here, setting up tents, probably walling it with snow and that, they would have insulated themselves and be able to, to overwinter, hopefully in some pretty good, good comfort. This particular national historical site, as well as the larger story of the Franklin Expedition, really lies at the intersection of various strands of history. On the one hand, it's clearly a part of British imperial history in the 19th century, as Britain was extending its tentacles all around the world and the Northwest Passage represented one of those last great frontiers to go and conquer. It's unquestionably part of Northern Canadian history as well, the very captivating series of encounters that seem to have occurred between the Franklin Expedition and Inuit at the time who observed their, their tragic trek down, eventually culminating at, at Starvation Cove. And it's also part of contemporary Canadian history as well, as the incredible search and energies that were devoted by Canada to go and solve this great mystery really showcase partnerships between government, between non-governmental organizations and between Inuit people and other knowledge holders here of the North who are helping us to solve this. Well, I always think this story too, often when I, when I think about historical events or scenarios, too, to think about what lessons they may present to us today. And to me, this is a classic case of you don't conquer the Arctic. You don't conquer the environment. You actually have to adapt to its rhythms and try to get into a harmony with it that it seems that the, the Erebus and Terra never were able to, to strike, right? But which Inuit, by contrast, were able to go and, and, and achieve, which allowed them to not only survive, but thrive in their homeland. So I, I think there's a lot of lessons there too for ourselves as we think about where we're, we're seeking to go as a, as a society, as a country.